I'm Zach Raw. I'm from the Midwest, from uh, Northern Kentucky. I have a bachelor's degree in sculpture from the Art Academy of Cincinnati. I studied uh, in New York for one semester in 08. I am a sculptor that uses found and purchased materials. Uh, I was raised in a very middle class upbringing and I had to like kind of I feel the need to, whether it's right or wrong, always rationalize being an artist. Um, and so, like, working on a tower as an artist, I'm not stupid enough to try and put a bunch of cinder blocks <laughs> up in a row by myself. And I asked my dad to do it. Like, he, is, he, he has a history of being a bricklayer, so he obviously knows more about that than I do. I struggle to get a clownfish to balance on a shark. <laughs> I'm not going to put people's lives in danger. As far as like the decision to um, not manipulate ma the materials that are in front of me, I can't really actually like sit back and like say like that's what happened. That was the piece that I did that on. Um, it was a lot. It was very gradual. Like I, I guess like I really wanted to be a painter probably about three or four years ago. Like painting was it, um, and then it just kind of. Uh, well, maybe I should paint on cardboard this time. Uh, but slowly, I guess, as I just started to have more, a little bit more money available to me and started to buy things, um, I just kind of ceased to see a reason to change them. I don't have any reason to change a gold Santa. I don't have any reason to change Love Pepsi cans or Peace Tea or balloons like there's absolutely no benefit for me to like manipulate them at this point in my career the objects are hilarious and pathetic and comical and i don't have to do anything to them to get them that way a breakthrough moment is when i was living in new york and i was working in my studio and i was doing a couple of different things um i didn't have as much money as i was used to having as an artist um I, I kind of sat down and I thought I need to be doing something and I bought a piece of paper and a white pen and I made a very simple drawing that was as boiled down as I could make it and it said I love life and you can too and that was it. Like I do want my work to ultimately be a kind of comical enjoyable experience. Capitalism definitely affects my work because I, I tend to engage with it in a very honest way. I don't like to pass judgment on anything because I generally enjoy shopping. <laughs> I think to hold disdain for um, Butterfingers seems silly and I, and, and I know it's bad for me, I know it's very unhealthy, um, but I enjoy them very sincerely. So I use that as a certain kind of departure point. So I guess w what happens in the studio is just when things kind of get moved around and you notice um, the way certain objects talk to each other, uh, it's just about being aware enough to catch it while it happens. I think as an artist, being aware is maybe, being aware in all situations, being aware while you're shopping, while you're in the studio, while you're cleaning, while um, you're walking down the street, all of those things are kind of get boiled down into the pot of making m me making my work. Um, so I guess about halfway through being at the Art Academy, I wanted to run an alternative art space. And I was lucky enough to be around enough people who also wanted to run an art space. <laughs> me and four other artists helped run U-Turn. I wouldn't go as far as to say like anyone has an official title, like there's no director of U-Turn, there's no wall painter of U-Turn. I mean, we're all five curators. I didn't, in, I, I didn't add the drawing that said One Solid Mutiny because I think if I would have done that then it would have became like the centerpiece to the rest of the show. But like the term One Solid Mutiny, being, it just describes like two kind of feuding halves. And in the actual installation of the work, I divvied up the space. And the Chris Farley, David Spade piece, um, David Spade did not go to Chris Farley's funeral, serves as like kind of the uh, linchpin or the um, example of that. 
I would say that the the work also has a lot to do with uh, finding maybe the simple magic of the ordinary or trying to allow things that already exist that might be deemed pathetic or poor or crappy and giving it like a second life, but putting it in a situation that it could also thrive.